So to touch on this again, unless you actually went through it, understanding the struggles of a Gen X child is quite unique. I mean, I understand there's a desire to shed light now on the challenges that we faced as children, you know, during our upbringing. I mean, because we navigated this landscape that, you know, the the challenges that defined us in our formative years was almost unprecedented at the time. Now, they're not as unique now, but they definitely were a unique set of circumstances at the time that shaped our childhood experiences. I mean, and it left undeniably soul scarring mark on our lives. I mean, let's just look at a few of these just to lay them out there as it is, okay? I mean, one, the rise in divorce rates. I mean, the rise in divorce rates in the 70s increased significantly which left many children, many children alone and grappling with that total emotional turmoil of a broken family and the things that you had to deal with, you know, and it was such a massive shift in society that it completely restructured the traditional family. It wasn't the same anymore and it wasn't what it was and it wasn't stable. I mean, it forced us as kids to adapt to these new living arrangements and we experienced such emotional trauma at the time, I guess you can say, which we learned to deal with instead of using it so much as a crutch all the time, we turned it into a strength. But we also had this massive sense of instability in everywhere we went, feeling that at any moment anything could be taken away, it would be upended and it would be gone, and there was nothing solid or guaranteed in your life except yourself. And then on top of that, secondly, during the 70s and the 80s, we had this economic landscape that was marked by massive inflation, a major recession, and extremely high unemployment rates. I mean, so the families that were together struggled like crazy to make ends meet. A lot of single parent families didn't make ends meet. I mean, so it led to massive financial stress. And in some cases, you know, it was major hardship for children because you either, you had to fend for yourself, you had to feed for yourself, you had to go out and you had to come up with a hustle at a young age. I mean, a lot of them, you know, were shielded from the severity of the family's finances and the struggles, but we definitely did not escape the impact. We might not have known why it was happening or just how bad finances were, but we knew the impact it had where at that time it was struggling, where there were a lot of families skipped meals, which is happening now, but it happened then. So you're not the first, you're not going to be the last. This thing seems to always be cyclical. But then I want to go to another one. I mean, we had something that was different as well. You know, we the, the safety and the absence of the technology that is there today. I mean, unlike today's digitally connected world, I mean, us children of Gen X, we spent their formative years outside. You know, we were outdoors navigating a world with fewer safety measures. That is a simple fact. We didn't have the same padded lifestyle and cushion corners that everybody has now. I mean, we rode bikes without helmets. We played unsupervised for hours and we constantly explored without parental oversight. I mean, these were common things. And while these experiences fostered the independence that we were known for, it also did expose us to risks that are less prevalent in today's more supervised environments in the world. However, I think oversupervision has turned around and gone the opposite way. And that seems to be an issue with a lot of these things. The pendulum was all the way at one end and it swung way too far back the other way instead of finding some middle ground. Fourthly, I say we had some massive social changes and cultural shifts that happened during our time, okay? I mean, major changes and shifts, which definitely included the advent of video games, right? We had the advent of radio, video games and the rise of television as a main source of entertainment. You got to remember, TV was still only a couple decades old when our generation was starting to be born. But I mean, and, and while these things offered new forms of leisure, I mean, they also raised concerns then about screen time and its potential impact on the children. You worry about screen time now, they worried about screen time when we were kids. And how these things and constant watching TV could affect your eyesight or rewire your brain and it could create educational challenges in the children. I mean, because during this period, education very greatly 
I mean, some children had access to quality schools while others were in overcrowded classrooms with limited resources. I mean, an ed the education system struggled like crazy to keep up with the constant changing in society at the time. I mean, and this quality of education often depended on the social economic status of your family, which that truly has not changed today. That is still a basis for a lot of it today. The quality of your education and how far you can go with your education a lot of times is based on your family's wealth and their social economic status. But then we had a lot of fear and political anxiety, just like people do today, but it was different than we were than then. Right. I mean, our geopolitical landscape during this time, I mean, it was known and it was called characterized by the Cold War tensions and the looming constant fear of nuclear conflict. I mean, they try and talk about it today and use the scare tactics, but it's not the same. I mean, we were literally at any moment ready for it to happen. It was expected to happen. I mean, the children of Gen X, we grew up amidst the heightened political anxiety. There were drills in schools preparing people for a potential nuclear threat which left a huge psychological impact on Gen X kids. And now while these things all paint a stark picture of our childhood experiences, it's crucial that I note that the resilience and adaptability that emerged as defining traits of this generation would not have happened without all these things as we were children. I mean, many children of Gen X, they grew up to be extremely resourceful, independent, and definite capable individuals. I mean, we're shaped by the trials that we faced during our upbringing, yes, but they made us who we were. And I, along with many of my generation, have all said we would not trade in the things that happened to us, be it good or bad, or how hard and tough they were, because they all shaped us into the individuals we are today, who all got along quite well, and who are all decent members of society. So it wasn't all bad, but it definitely had some challenges. And there are challenges in the younger generations today. The youngest of the Zs are having some of the same challenge we are now, and the alphas coming up right behind them are definitely going to understand a lot of these challenges and hardships that Gen X has had. So again, I say, it seems to be running the generational cycle, which was quite predictable. And I'm bound that we're going to see it cycle back around again, eventually. It's interesting to me to see what becomes of Gen Alpha and the generation after them. I hope to live long enough to see where that goes. Anyway, this is Drac saying until next time, I'll talk to you later and peace out, everybody.